What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Console. In this episode of Console, we're going to be looking at Daphne. Daphne is a programming language. It looks to be a Microsoft Research programming language with a built-in program verifier. If you're not familiar with verification, program verification, um, it is the idea that you can specify things about your program to the verifier, such as preconditions, postconditions, things that you believe to be true about the program prior to executing the function, and things that you expect to be true after the function executes, um, in order to have the verifier check that the logic is sound in, in your program. Uh, basically, that the program is behaving the way you would expect it to, to behave. Uh, usually what programmers do for this uh, is write unit tests, right? Unit tests and integration tests and things like this. Uh, but a verifier is a next level above that. And usually why programmers don't learn this or they don't put this into the programs is because there's a lot of overhead to write the logic. It's almost like writing a program for your program in some sense. Um, because of that, typically the, the types of programmers who are writing these sorts of things are... Uh, programmers in which the program is very, very important. Things like maybe the Mars rover would have program verification, or maybe if you're writing code for a bank and there's millions of dollars at stake, right? These are programs where you want to make absolutely sure there are no bugs in the program and there are particularly no bugs that you're going to find at runtime. And again, so what makes Daphne interesting is most programs or uh, programming languages don't have the verifier built directly into the language. In this case, Daphne does. So uh, let's dive right in. Okay, this is the Daphne repo. Uh, as usual, I'll link to it in the description of the video. You can see David Koch was the last um, uh, committer. And uh, when I was clicking through, he seemed to be making quite a bit of the commits as well. Uh, so I'll probably link to him and various other people who have contributed to this code uh, in the description of the video as well. Um, so after kind of clicking around, I saw this Rise for Fun tutorial, which is where they suggest you go to learn Daphne, and so that is what we'll be following in this video. When you first open the tutorial, it's uh, they give you a little toy example, basically a hello world of Daphne, if you will, um, and you can run it, and it shows you that since the assert statement here, 10 less than 2 is not true, uh, the program will not compile, right? And, which is uh, obviously a good thing. Um, and then if you click that little purple tutorial button, uh, you'll be taken to the tutorial, which is what we'll be going through in this video. Before doing that though, I wanted to point out this Rise for Fun website. It looks like it has a bunch of really interesting uh, tools here. And, uh, you can see Daphne is one of them, but there's a whole bunch of them, uh, which I may be going over more of these in the future because I had such a good time learning Daphne. Okay, but uh, let's not talk about that for now. We're talking about Daphne and so, uh, we're going to be doing here is going through this little tutorial. Um, it looks like this is a two hours worth of content, so I'll definitely be breaking this into multiple videos. But for the first one, we'll at the very least be learning about an introduction to Daphne at this point. Um, so what they're doing here is we haven't gotten into any actual code right now, but what they're doing here is they're showing you a way, one particular way of specifying that the entirety of an array is positive, right? So here's one way. Uh, in which Daphne is helping you out is you could check this for the array passed into your method before you actually do any sort of computation, right? You can run this for all uh, predicate uh, against the array and Daphne won't compile if it ends up not being true that there is a element in the array that is less than zero. So this is just one small example that they're saying, hey, check out what Daphne can do. Um, and we'll start digging into the meat and potatoes of the Daphne language right now. So the first thing to notice about Daphne is it is an imperative language, uh, which just means that it follows steps one by one by one by one uh, after compilation. You know, pretty standard stuff. Uh, most programming languages you could consider imperative for the most part, or at least uh, the most familiar ones, C++, Java, those things like that. Uh, the other thing is that Daphne has methods um, and types. So you can see here that uh, we're declaring a method called apps. It takes a parameter x, and that parameter must be an int. Uh, another thing that's interesting about Daphne is you specify the return type as well. So you can see it returns y, and that is also an integer as well. If you look at the multiple returns method, you can see that it, you can pass any number of parameters and return any number of values from a method using uh, commas. And then also note the colon equal is the assignment expression in Daphne as well. So far, 
uh, nothing too crazy. Right here is how to do if else statements. Again, pretty standard stuff. Um, one thing I forgot to mention that's kind of interesting is you can assign into the return value. So you can treat the y in this absolute this abs method as a local variable and then sign directly into it without returning here. Uh, so that's everything for the basics of the programming language. Uh, obviously, there's nothing too crazy here, but now we're going to start talking about the verifier in Daphne. And to do that, we have to talk about preconditions and postconditions. So as I mentioned in the introduction to the video, preconditions are post and postconditions are things that you specify about your program. They're things that you understand to be true prior to your program executing and things that you expect to be true after. Uh, the program executes. So in Daphne, there are two keywords that you, you'll use for the preconditions and the postconditions. For preconditions, you'll use the requires keyword, meaning I require this thing to be true about the input or the state of the program prior to executing this method. And then you can see here that they're using ensures, and that is something uh, for the postconditions. Basically, this is what I expect to be true after my thing is finished running. So in the case of abs, you can see it's a very basic example where you're ensuring that y is going to be greater than zero because that's always the case for any sort of absolute value function if you're taking the definition of absolute value uh, from in the mathematical sense. So what you do here for these preconditions and postconditions is you put them in between the returns where you specify like the values that are returned and then the scope the parentheses, the open and close parentheses, the scope of the method. So that's where you will define in Daphne what your preconditions and postconditions for your program will be. Right here in the multiple returns method, you can see a case where both requires and ensures is being used in the same uh, method. This is to obviously require a precondition prior to the method uh, executing and then also ensure that something happens after the method executes. Again, preconditions, post conditions, but in this case you're seeing both used in the same method, which is completely okay. Um, there's a bunch of exercises strewn throughout this tutorial. Uh, I'm actually not going to show these, but uh, just be aware that they're there and they were quite useful to kind of test your understanding of the concepts as you're going through. Right now, uh, seems things are seeming pretty simple, uh, but they're going to be turned up just a bit <laughs> later on in the tutorial. But anyway, just be aware that these are uh, available and you can take them if you want. So we've talked about preconditions and postconditions. There are also assertions in the Daphne programming language, and these function just like any sort of assert statement, really, in any sort of programming language. Effectively, if the assertion is incorrect, the program will stop executing. You can see here that I'm kind of testing this out with uh, basically a false assertion, and you can see that uh, Daphne is failing to compile and kind of telling me why uh, the assert statement failed. Here's one thing that kind of annoyed me about the tutorial is I was trying to run their exercises and often they use the exercises uh, to illustrate why something is necessary in the language. So basically they'll let you fail at an exercise <laughs> and then later tell you why something didn't work, right? And that kind of annoyed me because I expect that the exercises are achievable with the knowledge that you've gained up until this point. And in some cases throughout this tutorial, that wasn't the case. So you'll see me struggling with like doing basic assertion, even though this shouldn't be so difficult. Um, you can see here, I'm even trying to like Google how the heck do I specify this post condition? Uh, eventually they tell you how, but I don't know. I just wish they would have made the exercises a little bit more obvious and achievable rather than like letting you fail. And then after you failed for half an hour, uh, oh, by the way, here's this new functionality that you needed in order to fit to complete the exercise we just gave you, right? Anyway, this is the knowledge you needed in order to complete that max exercise, right? It's kind of a therefore statement, right? You can see there's in my example, ensure is A greater than or equal to B. Therefore, C must be equal to A ensures a less than b therefore c must equal b right you're basically just specifying you know uh the state of the world given the inputs basically uh but without doing that the verifier was failing even though i had what amounted to the like, correct logic in my precondition statement okay so up until this point we've talked about preconditions postconditions assertions and methods um, at this point, we're going to talk about functions, and functions you can kind of think of as stateless, uh, stateless procedures, if you will. And um, 
What's important about these is apparently they get wiped out by Daphne. So the function body itself is not usable. Like you can't actually use it to execute code. It's more of a way of cleaning up your uh, assertions about the code or verification statements about the code, if you will, right? It's a way of abstracting logic related to verification and not necessarily abstracting logic related to execution, if you will. So that's the important thing to understand about functions. Um, one way of getting around this in Daphne is you can define something to be both a method and a function. So if you want to reuse some bit of logic inside a function for both uh, verification and also for computation, you can do that using the function method syntax or method function syntax. So this Fibonacci function here at the bottom is uh, a very good illustration here, right? It's, it wouldn't actually uh, allow you to compute Fibonacci, but it allows you to define the mathematical concept of Fibonacci. Uh, so you can use it in verification throughout the code. Uh, you wouldn't actually be able to compute Fib using this function, but you'd be able to stick it somewhere in order to check that your function is behaving correctly. Okay, this episode's getting a little long. I think it's a good halfway point. We've talked about the basics of Daphne up until this point, and we can start talking about the more advanced concepts in the next video. In the next video, we will talk about things like loop invariance and predicates and arrays and framing and things like this. Uh, so we have a basic understanding of the syntax of Daphne, and then we can start getting into the more advanced verification-related concepts in the next video. I'll see you next week.